Secret Challenge is perhaps the ultimate test in the field of robotics. It's a challenge sponsored by the US military, and teams have to design and build an unmanned robotic vehicle to cross the Mojave Desert. We covered the first race last year, and no team completed the challenge. But this year, a team of students from the University of British Columbia has its sights set on the checkered flag. And Mark Miller has that story. They've been working for 24 hours straight. The pressure is on. Team Thunderbird needs to get their Jeep on the road and running by the end of the day. Get us in. Steve Jones is feeling the pressure. We have to get these deadlines sorted out today. If they don't make it, they may be kissing $2 million in prize money goodbye. $2 million U.S. buys a lot of good Canadian beer. 30 seconds from history. At last year's DARPA challenge, Sandstorm. No one even came close to making it across the Mojave Desert. The autonomous vehicle that made it the furthest got only seven miles into the course before it got hung up. Nothing we could do about it. Many of these teams were backed by multi-million dollar budgets that bought them the best technology available. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. But their driverless vehicles were still not smart enough oh. or tough enough to make it. Team Thunderbird is working with a substantially smaller budget. I think the bolts like cross or something. They're considered this year's underdogs. Yo, Diego, we got work to do. Their high-tech equipment includes a 10-speed sprocket and derailleur to help run the steering system. Pretty hard with double power steering on. But their custom-built software command and control system is turning heads. We'll have a computer on board that basically mimics how we think as human beings as we drive a car and it will have to do this without any human intervention whatsoever the first step to getting into the race is to prove to DARPA that this vehicle actually works and the video needs to show the vehicle operating robotically the team will run the truck by remote control there's two channels throttle is when you press it up the next step will be to install the computer brain and we set the position manually to replace the human operator we can have up to 16 position on this driver Team Thunderbird's approach is different than other teams. Instead of building an autonomous vehicle, they've decided to focus only on the driver. We can take this out and throw it in a Ford Explorer or Chevy Suburban. Whatever vehicle you want, it's a matter of four bolts and taking up the driver's seat and dropping this one in. Nothing. But there's a problem. The mechanical driver, which operates the steering, gas, and brake, isn't carrying out the commands sent to him. The triggering pins on the pick aren't working right. We're running short for time. The team has been plagued for days with faulty wiring in their command system. We should have it sorted out in half an hour or so. Okay, that's good. Uh, we're feeling pretty confident. Eventually, the bug is traced to loose wires and a dead battery. Now we're going to see if it all comes together or not. With the lights starting to fade, Steve decides it's time to give it a try. Go for it. The truck is towed through the UBC campus. Hey, what's that corner? It takes about 15 minutes to get to the testing ground. <laughs> a half empty parking lot. Okay, that's good. Stop. With the truck unhooked, it's time to test, but what's the matter? those loose wires are back. The steering control is working, but the brake and gas pedals aren't. For the next hour, they troubleshoot and the sun slips from the sky. Let go, let go for a second. Yeah. Some of these guys have now gone almost two days without sleep. Turn on the vehicle. And the stress is starting to take its toll. Well, why don't we run this wire straight to the positive? We might have to settle for a test of the full steering system and 90% of the throttle and brake systems. When they do find the problem, it turns out it's those loose wires again. I've got the kill switch. Steve makes the final checks. Full brake. Full brake. The plan is to move the truck around the parking lot very slowly. Okay, okay. Slow down, slow down. Slow down. Kill it. Kill it. It took off. I knew right away we were in trouble. The good news is Steve installed a kill switch a few days ago. It takes a few tries, but it does work. I know what I know what's going on. I reached for the emergency stop right right off the bat. So I, I definitely knew our, our calibration was off. It's a scare for the team, a lesson in rushing things. But Steve says you have to look on the positive side. We've managed to make uh, the largest remote control car that any of us have ever played with. I don't know what happened there, but all our emergency systems work. I need one of you guys. The team decides it's no use pushing their luck again. 
they decide to park the Jeep. We're about 90% to being successful. It's just calibration now, so that's uh, that's a huge success. For now, Team Thunderbird heads back to the lab, knowing that they may just be a half step closer to the DARPA challenge. But Team Thunderbird has some competition. There are now 195 teams entered in the first round of the DARPA challenge, and we have some exclusive video of the entries. Back from last year is Team Blue's Ghost Rider Bot. There it is there. It uses a differential GPS, two high-speed cameras, and a gyroscopic stabilized gimbal sensor that keeps the motorcycle on the level. Now, another vehicle returning again for a second year is Terramax. It's from the Oshkosh Truck Corporation. This huge thing, it's a behemoth, includes stereo vision cameras on the hood, forward-looking radar, vertical scanning LIDAR, and 12 sonar sensors, sensors in case it's into tight navigational spaces. Now, to show you that size doesn't matter in this DARPA challenge, this is the University of Cincinnati's Cincinnati Cub. It's already won awards at the Intelligent Ground Vehicle Contest in Florida. The boxy little thing uses sonar and lasers, as they all seem to do for direction, can turn on a dime, has a top speed of 10 miles an hour. Video entries are due in mid-March. The actual race will be held later in the fall. And later in this show, giving blood to get the goods on my body burden. That is the name given to a stew of potentially harmful toxins coursing through my veins as I speak. And up next, the return of the Hobbit. New research suggests the small hominid from Indonesia really is a unique species.